Programming, I think, gets really interesting and fun when we sit down and start addressing some real-world scenarios, and that's what we're going to do in this video. We are going to pretend that we are working at a new startup, and our boss has come to us and said, hey, we are launching our product this afternoon, and the second we go public, there are going to be a bunch of people hitting the website, which means we need a website up and running responsive so that people have a website to land on, and it's got to be ready before lunch. Okay, that doesn't give us a lot of time. We're under the gun, so I'm going to talk you through how that might look. And I'm going to start right here by downloading Visual Studio, in this case 2019. Just click the Download Preview button, and that's going to download an installer for me that I can then use to launch the Visual Studio installer. If you've got a computer in front of you, I would recommend that you follow right along with me because you can do everything that I'm going to do here and really get your hands dirty with some website programming. I'm going to walk through the installer. Now, Visual Studio is an IDE, an integrated development environment, and it's going to be a big, complex product for programming but that's good and if it's daunting the first time you use it that's okay because you should expect it to be this is a complicated thing we're talking about doing now the installer lets us install some different modules you can see them all listed here I'm simply going to choose dotnet desktop development and ASP.NET and web development those are the two that I'm gonna start with if you want to play around with Python you can do that Azure node all of these things are available but for the time being I'm just gonna download those two and wait for the installer to well, finish installing them. What's cool about Visual Studio is that it's going to come with a lot of tools to get us up and running quickly, specifically some website templates. So with a couple of clicks, once we're finished installing, we're going to have a website ready to go and ready to be deployed wherever we are deploying our websites, whether it's in the cloud or on some local server. But it's going to write a lot of the code for us, and then we can simply manipulate the code that we need to in order to A, get something up and functional and running right away, but also B, start to learn how this all works. It's a great learning tool. I think the best way to learn programming is to actually sit down and work with some actual code and you know play around with it. Try to build something, try to break something, try to fix it once you've broken it. That's hands down the best way to learn. Visual Studio here then wants you to set up a connection to an online account. You're welcome to do that. I'm going to say not now, maybe later. You can choose a theme. I'm partial to the dark theme, but any of the themes work. That's just how Visual Studio looks while you're using it. And once it finishes setting up, you get this menu right here where you can start off and create a new project right away. You can continue without code if you want to start sort of a, a blank, blank project. But we will create a new project, and this is going to give us uh, access to some wizards for some starter projects. And you'll see here that just with the two templates that we installed, there's a lot of starter projects, a lot of way that you can get going on your code, I'm going to choose an ASP.NET Core web application, this one right here. This is a relatively straightforward one that uses some common technologies like Razor, MVC, and Web API. We'll select Next. Let's give our project a name. I'll call it the Fancy Pants Project. Why not? Notice this location right here. I'm going to actually copy this to my clipboard. That'll be important in a moment. The solution name can be the same as the project name. That's fine. Select Create, and this is going to build out an entire templated web application for me. I choose web application right here. Also notice you can fire up with Angular code or React.js. We'll just do the basic web application though. I think that's the easiest one to get started with. And then your project loads up in the Visual Studio Designer, the Visual Studio Editor. And like I said, this can be a little overwhelming. There's a lot going on here. We've got a couple of menu bars across the top. We've got a few panels on the right hand side. Basically, what you want to know about is the Solution Explorer over here represents the folders and files inside of your project. No programming project is really made up of just one file and one folder. Even a basic application is going to have a few different files, and that's true of a web application especially. Now, if I open up Windows Explorer and I go to that uh, folder that we copied out of the creator a moment ago, I can zoom into this folder here, and you'll notice that these folders represent the folders over here. There's a www root folder on this. If I bring this up, there's WW root. And you can see this has CSS images, JS, and lib. CSS images, JS, and lib. So the Solution Explorer over here reflects the folder structure that our application or our source code is being stored in. And by the way, I haven't written any code. I haven't done anything yet, right? I just selected Create New Project. Check out this green button up here. I'm going to launch this website. All right, this is so great. Check out what this has done. My website is now running. Specifically, Visual Studio has fired up a web server to host my website, and it opened up my website in a browser page. I'm going to bring it up right here. Here it is. This is the website that we just created. This is all built for us. Check out. It's got a cool little accept our cookie policy thing up top. We can say learn more or accept. We can click these little buttons over here to change these panels. 
Now all of this is connections to tutorials and advertising for Microsoft. We want to change that for our website, but look at how quick and easy we could get up with an actual functioning website. This website can now be deployed to a web server and hosted for the world to see. If we were going to learn how to deploy to Azure and in about another 15 or 20 minutes we could have this up and running live on the World Wide Web. I'm going to select stop right here to close it down and let's take a look at how we can edit that. If you open up the pages folder right here we have some .cshtml files and these represent the different pages inside of our website. Index is the one I want to look at specifically. I'm going to double click it to launch it inside of our editor down here. And what we are seeing on this page is we are seeing what we were just looking at. Now this is a lot of complex code and obviously we're not going to be able to learn all about it inside of this nugget. But let me tell you a little bit about what's going on here. This top section right here is made up of or rather describes those banner images that we were scrolling through on the left and the right. Let's launch this again actually and take a look at it. Remember this right here I had these awesome big images and I could click to the left or the right to toggle between them. Well that's what's being described by each of these items right here. Here is a div that says item and there's the ending div for it, the closing div for it. And inside there's a reference to images banner one dot SVG. That's really important. We'll take a look at that in a second. Down below it, we see almost the exact copy of this code, but a reference to banner 2, that SVG, and below that, banner 3. So we have three different ones, and check out this text here. Learn how to build ASP.NET apps that can be run anywhere. When I bring up the website, look at that. Learn how to build ASP.NET apps that can be run anywhere. So that's where each of these panels is being described, right inside of this section. So for starters, if I want to get this website up and running for my new uh, account, my new company, well, I probably want to replace those images. Why don't we do that? I'm going to stop it again. Up here in www.root, we see the images folder. That little tilde symbol right there refers to the root folder for our website. And in here is images, and in images we have three images, banner 1, 2, and 3. Now, I can tell you because I looked up at those images and figured out how big they are, that they are 1140 by 360. That's the size of them. So if I want to replace them with my own images, I want to make my own images that are 1140 by 360 pixels, and that's exactly what I've done. I've got three images here. I'm just going to copy them, paste them back down into this images folder alongside banner 1, 2, and 3. And notice what happened right over here on my uh, on my Solution Explorer inside of Visual Studio. Now I see those three files. So I copied them into the folder in Explorer. Now they are visible in my Visual Studio. Next I want to come over to that index.cshtml page and I'm actually going to change each of them from banner1.svg to image1.png are the name of my files. And we're going to do the same thing down here where it was displaying banner2.svg. We're going to display image2. And for banner 3, yep, you guessed it, we're going to make that image 3. Save my file. I'm going to run this again. And look at that. Ooh, ah, new images. I've taken this template that they built for me, and I've started slotting in my own templates and my own images. So it says cool stuff that I wanted to say instead of the cool stuff that Microsoft had it saying. New products launching this year. Welcome to our new website. Now obviously there's some other stuff I want to clean up here and frankly you can see all of that in here if you want to. For example, I don't want all this stuff about learning how to build ASP.NET apps. So I'm going to put in what's known as a comment. By surrounding this code with open bracket and then an exclamation point and two dashes and over here I close it with two dashes and a close bracket that comments out that code. I can do the same thing down here on the second one and then again on the third page as well. I will save that and having saved it I'm going to bring up the page again. Now I never actually stopped running it so this time I'm just going to refresh this page and look all that text on the bottom went away. Now it's just the banner, just the cycle with my slides on it, the things that I wanted to say. If I still wanted those notes down there I could absolutely still use them. I would uncomment this and I would replace this text with whatever I wanted it to say. For example, on the first panel I can do that. I'll say we're working hard to get our product to you. I'll leave the href in there, the, the reference to, um, to wherever that links to, but you would obviously want to put your own link in there. Bring my page back up, refresh it, and there it is. We're working hard to get our product to you. Learn more. 
So you can very quickly and easily update this template that was created by Visual Studio to reflect the website that you need. And in really just less than an hour, you can have a nice website up and running. My homework for you, your takeaway from all this, should be to continue to modify this website to reflect what you think it might say or it ought to, to do. For instance, down here below these changes where I commented out and I changed those banner panels, here is the columns that are underneath the banner. There's application uses, how to, overview. Look at that, there's working with razor pages. When I bring up the page, I can see that right down here, application usage, how to, working with razor pages. So you can modify this existing code and know that you are making changes to a functional good template website that you want to use. So I hope you found that pretty awesome and how fast and easy it is to get started on really what amounts to a pretty complicated implementation. This is a, a website with a back-end web server, some front-end HTML and CSS code and JavaScript as well. And you can put it all together very quickly and very easily and modify it for your use. It's a great way to get started and get involved in programming. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.